This is Top Shelf, the KIJHL podcast. I'm Mark Berry. This week on Top Shelf, our INE Plus Nutrition Player Spotlight with Emmanuel Sequera is with Ethan Davey with the 100 Mile House Wranglers. Also on the podcast, we talk with the Soyuz Coyotes head coach and general manager, Ken Law, Grand Forks Border Bruins broadcaster, Kevin McKinnon. Emmanuel has a great Q&A with AHL Milwaukee Admirals and former Creston Valley Thundercat D-man, Jake Livingstone. We'll share part of that interview. So heading into week six, the power rankings were led by the Princeton Posse, the Kimberly Dynamiters, Beaver Valley Nighthawks, 100 Mile House Wranglers, and Revel Stoke Grizzlies. Week six began on Tuesday with a pair of shootout thrillers. Aaron Krikora finally allowed a goal after 145 minutes of shutout hockey. He and the Merritt Centennials came out on top with a 3-2 win over Kelowna. Max Fowl was also sensational in the Chiefs goal. It was a great night for goalies. Brendan Smith stopped 47 of 48 shots, plus all 80 faced in the shootout as the Creston Valley Thundercats squeaked past the Golden Rockets 2-1. Riley Deck faced less rubber in the Golden Net, but was also impressive in the shootout. Turning to special teams heading into the weekend, the Chase Heat have the best power play at 25%. On the penalty kill, Beaver Valley and Revelstoke are tied at 91.8%. The top scorer is Matthew Langdon of the Posse, followed by Levi Astle from the Grand Forks Border Bruins and Brayson Dubay from the Kamloops Storm. They both have 18 points. Riley Langell from the Dynamiters is fourth with 17 Rounding off the top five are Tristan Wheel from the Dynamiters and Jaden Rusnak from the Wranglers. They both have 16 points. Amongst goaltenders playing 180 minutes or more, Blake Sittler of the Posse, 5-0 at 949. Michael Makowski, Sycamus Eagles, 941. Connor Stojan from the Nighthawks, 939. Gibson Horn from the Posse at 934. And Hayden Hyde, Castlegar Rebels, At 928, there are 21 goalies with save percentages north of 900. Time now for the INE Plus Nutrition Player Spotlight. Boost your energy naturally with Canada's best tasting super greens by INE Plus Nutrition. Abundant in over 50 antioxidants, vitamins, and minerals, INE Plus Super Greens will improve your immune and digestive systems, increase your energy, and enhance your mental clarity. You'll feel better overall, almost like you could tackle any challenge. Shop now at www.inenutrition.com. That's www.inenutrition.com. And use the code KIJHL10 to get 10% off your order. The Rusnak's there to push him off. Webster collects the puck on the boards. Sent to the slot. Here's Davey with a quick shot. He scores! Five hole on Tate out of nowhere. I'm joined by Ethan Davey, captain of the 100 Mile House Wranglers. Ethan, welcome to Top Shelf, the KIJHL podcast. Thanks for having me. Ethan, uh, so the, the uh, KIJHL power rankings came out this week and the team cracked it. What was that like for the team to crack the top five? It's it's pretty sweet being here for three years and this would be our first time cracking and it's, it's really nice and I think the boys are pretty proud of how we're doing so far and it's it's been good. Yeah, cuz like touch on like how does the group feel that it's been playing of late? Uh, I think we're definitely getting a lot better. Like we started off a little rough. I think we we lost our first 3. But now in the last 10 as it said, we're 7 and 3 and I think our pace is just picking up more and more as we keep going and we're just going to get better and better as we go. What are some of the things that you guys feel that you're doing well as a group? I think we're all buying into what our coach is asking from us. Like a lot of people are blocking shots, chipping pucks deep, winning those puck races. And it, it's not like we're outscoring the teams by a lot. Like we beat, we beat Williams Lake in a shootout the other night, but we fought to the bitter end. Like we weren't, we weren't giving up at all. So I, I think everyone's just buying in. It's been great. And talk about maybe the, uh, the time period when it comes to adjusting to a new coach. What's that been like? It's been really good, actually. Like, I thought when I first came back, I thought it was going to be a little bumpy, but he was great to, like, just to get to know him right away and just to get us going. 
there was there was barely any transition like it was just like we had known him from the start and as the captain of the team i mean what has your job been like uh, being the leader and kind of doing what you need to do or even what the coaches expect from you to lead the group it's been a little bit different like past few years obviously but i think they all have trust in me and i have trust in them and my role doesn't really change i'm still going to work as hard as i can and i expect the same from them um you guys are special teams like how do you guys feel that you're performing in that area uh it's it's been all right our penalty kill could use a bit of work but we also could stop taking so many penalties but that's this one's got to be there our power play starting to come together we've been practicing a lot more with it and it's kind of uh, our units have switched up and i think we're starting to starting to mend and i think Pretty soon it'll be pretty deadly. That's Ethan Davey, captain of the 100 Mile House Wranglers. Ethan, thanks for joining us on Top Shelf, the KIJHL podcast. Thank you. The Player Spotlight is a presentation of INE Plus Nutrition. This is Top Shelf, the KIJHL podcast, now available on YouTube. Still to come, the voice of the Border Bruins, Kevin McKinnon, and Coyotes head coach and general manager, Ken Law. But first, there's a great Q&A article on the KIJHL.ca website with AHL Milwaukee Admirals defenseman Jake Livingstone. Jake played parts of three seasons with the Creston Valley Thundercats before heading off to the BCHL, NCAA, AHL, and National Hockey League. Here's Emmanuel Sequera with Jake Livingstone. So Jake, uh, talk about what was your first pro season of hockey like? Oh, it was good. I was pretty fortunate to be in a good city. Obviously, Nashville's organization, uh, Nashville's a good city. Milwaukee's a really good city, too, for my league team. So it's like you get pretty fortunate to be a part of uh, good cities, good ownership and stuff. So all that was fun. And obviously, we had a really good team. So that helped. When you made the jump from college hockey, was it a short period of time for you to kind of get comfortable and be able to play like you know you're capable of? No, I'd probably say the opposite, but it was still good. Like, it's always learning, you know what I mean? It's just like you figure it out. It takes time, like. Like I said, I mean, it's not going to happen right away. Some guys are faster than others. Some guys aren't. So it just depends. It took me a little bit, obviously. I mean, I, initially coming out of college, I kind of got thrown in the wolves den a little bit, but it was fun. And obviously I'll never take that for granted, being able to do something like that and have those uh, accomplishments under my belt. So it's kind of just improving from here on out. Yeah, because you played five games in the NHL. I mean, how much did that experience help you with I guess, adapting to the pro level, and then especially when you go to the AHL. A lot of it, too. You build a lot of expectations for yourself when you take that jump and then come into the next year and uh, you get sent down at a camp, too, right? You have expectations and what you think should happen and what should happen and what you're ready for, right? And it's kind of like it's a different process than most guys, right? Most guys get drafted and play in the AHL, then play in the NHL where I was in the – college went right to the NHL and played a year in the AHL like it's just backwards it's what I did was completely backwards so it's different right but it was like I said it was good and I I cannot complain at all I the accomplishments I got to achieve and stuff like that my family be there is pretty sweet I guess obviously the ultimate goal for you is to make it to the NHL how close do you feel that you are to achieving that goal yeah I mean it's pretty minuscule when you think about it um in the grand scheme of things even when I I went from college and played in the NHL. Like it was, it was a jump, obviously. But you're like, okay, like I can play at this level. Like it's not, you know, what I mean, it's not like you're reaching. Like I'm like, I wasn't sticking out like a sore thumb. Like oh, like this is bad. You know what I mean? Like it's just like, yeah. There's just little things that it's just like that. Some of it's opportunity. Some of it's just like right place, right time. You got to keep going. Obviously, there's things that you need to work on every day, and that's kind of what we're in Milwaukee for. Does it feel like forever ago when you played for your hometown Crescent Valley Thundercats? Yeah, I was telling Charlie that probably like, like I don't even know how it's been. It's been like 10 years, maybe. It's been a long time. Obviously, I remember those like, we had that, it's me, like I grew up with some guys around on that team with me, like local ball and stuff. And, like played with my brother there one year for like five games. Played with a lot of guys. We have uh, Jake Lucini. He played for Beaver Valley. I'm pretty sure he played for the Beaver Valley Nighthawks there. Yeah. When he was like 16, then played in trail, and he's here now. So it's like, get a lot of connections from a long time ago, you know? So it's it's pretty cool. Wilson Posse playing it back up. Lowen trying to come in a shot. Rebound. They bang at it. Loose all around Hunter Arts. They shot it. Oh, good save. Hit 
grabbed there by the Coyotes captain Semenov, who popped himself in the crease area and saved that shot from going in the net. I'm joined by Ken Law, head coach and general manager of the Soyuz Coyotes. Ken, welcome to Top Shelf, the KIJHL podcast. Thanks, Manuel. Ken, your team is 10 games into its season. What, what are you liking that you're seeing from the group? Uh, we knew we'd be a younger team going in. Just growing pains right now. I think we're starting to get used to each other and the players are starting to play as a group instead of as individuals. I see some growth coming. Um, we had a setback on Saturday against Columbia Valley, but we just move forward and get ready for the next set of games. When it came to assembling this team, were there any specific things that you focused on that you wanted from the players that you've been bringing in? We knew we had to get better on the back end. Uh, we had an outstanding goaltender in Arnson, but he wasn't getting a lot of support from the defensive side of it. So we kind of built from the back end out, brought in some forwards that are more defensive-minded, and just having enough players. Last year, we couldn't find D-men for anything. Um Guys were holding on to 10, 12 of them, and they weren't moving them. So we were stuck at five most of the season. What are your early impressions of the division that you're in so far? Well, we knew it would be a tough division going in. Um, 16 division and probably arguably three of the best teams in that division. Um, having to see them all the time, it makes, makes you uh, fight that much harder to produce uh, when you're up against the top teams. Uh, since the league has become junior A tier two, talk about uh, like what you notice in the difference of the talent level of players that the teams in the league are able to recruit. Yeah, it's getting getting easier to recruit. There's still that that thing out east where they think we're just junior B still, but they're starting to see now that the league is making those advancements and. The division we're in is very strong right now, and it's going to be a fight right from start to finish. And most divisions are in the same boat. Um, players are getting better. Recruitment's getting a little bit easier now. So uh, I can only see improvement coming from here on out. Touch on maybe some players on your team that are performing well, maybe under the radar type of guys that uh, you really like how they're playing and helping the team. We recruited a couple of guys, made some trades for a couple of guys that came in and have been stellar for us. Um, Tyler Samanoff, one of our captains. Haynes, another captain. We have a home and away captain, so it spreads out the leadership a little bit. And they've both stepped into major roles and pleasantly surprised by both their their abilities and their leadership. And maybe touch on some rookies that you find are, are making a solid transition to the league. Major one would be Russell Weatherhead, D-man that we got out of the Rockets program in Kelowna. He's come in and been everything we expected him to be and arguably one of the best D-man out there right now. He's steady. Uh, he's got great speed. He can move the puck with authority. Uh, he's just a, He had a little bit of a illness, so it's kept him out of the lineup for the last three games, but um, he'll be back in this weekend. Uh, up front, um, we've got another Rockets AAA guy that's there, Rudolph, Mason Rudolph. He's been everything you're expecting him to be. We've got a 17-year-old forward that plays on the same line as him and Dexter Materi. Probably the smallest guy in the league, but he uh, he doesn't worry about the size. He's just got great skill and, and he's feisty. So That's Ken Law, head coach and general manager of the Soyuz Coyotes. Ken, thanks for joining us on Top Shelf, the KIJHL podcast. Thank you very much, Manuel. Enjoyed it. Is it Levi Astle, that's of what, course. That's what it looked like to me. <laughs> Astle has a goal already tonight. You know, Levi Astle, he's such an interesting character. Uh, great guy to be around. We'll see what he does here. Over to the far side, slowly. Skates in and picks up the shootout win for the Border Bruins. On Top Shelf, the KIJHL podcast, I'm talking with a voice of the Grand Forks Border Bruins, Kevin McKinnon. How the heck are you, Kevin? Mark, I'm great. It's been a it's October has been a pretty good month for the Border Bruins despite a really long road trip and things are going really well. Uh talk about that road trip. You got to see the province. 
Yeah, it was, we call it the long road trip. When L. Williams laid Kamloops the weekend before last, Cody and I actually, the broadcast crew, tagged along on that. So we actually got to see a lot of the province ourselves, four out of a possible six points. So it was uh, it was a good trip for the Bruins. Uh, talk a little bit about, uh, about those uh, two locations for a lot of KIJHL fans, Williams Lake and Quinnell. That's new territory. Talk about your experience up there. Yeah, it was great. You know, first of all, a uh, big shout out to, to the broadcasters at both uh, Quinnell and Williams Lake. Welcomed uh, the broadcasters from Grand Forks with open arms. Uh, it was nice. We were based in Williams Lake and so also had a bit of time to tour the town. Um, we also stopped off and saw the uh, facilities in both Hunter Mile House and Merritt uh, as we were driving through. So uh, from, from a, a rink perspective, we, uh, we hit five in, in three days. It was pretty amazing. It is good, and it's great when uh, when you can go into another location and the broadcasters are there welcoming you in on the broadcast. It gives that it really gives that uh, that great feel for the the fans on both teams. So be able to hear some familiar voices and uh, get both sides uh, covered pretty well. Yeah, we actually love it when uh, when either we can take part in other people's broadcasts or when other broadcasters uh, are down at the jack and uh, are able to jump in on ours because it really gives us that additional perspective. You know, we can talk for hours about our own teams. We're not always going to be as versed about the, the, the away teams. And when you've got the broadcaster who has that knowledge, uh, that really plays well. So it really appreciate when people are able to do that. And, uh, you know, it's, it's always an open invite in Grand Forks. And we certainly appreciate that, uh, you know, we, we were involved in the Spokane broadcast the weekend before that. Um, and yeah, lots of fun to do that. Uh, well, we're here to talk about the Border Bruins. So let's talk about the Border Bruins. Uh, you got to talk about Levi Astle. I mean, he's number two in scoring, tied for number two in scoring. Uh, but talk about uh, just the kind of year you expect out of him. You know, it's it's really he's always fun to watch, and we the the phrase that we use is Levi is doing Levi things. Um, you know, we have kind of come to have certain expectations uh, after after watching him play last year and some some you know great work during the playoffs last year as well. And so you know, it just when Levi is on the ice, you might not notice him for a bit. But he's going to do something that's going to just jump out and pop right at you. And that's something that, that we've certainly seen. He's had a couple of really big goals, game-winning goals for the Border Bruins. And uh, it's always exciting to watch him play because he's got speed. Uh, he's got uh, the ability to just sneak between players and then just fire a, a hard shot right on the net and always seems to manage to find that, that open corner. And it's certainly not a one-man show. you got Tyler Burke, you got Justin Mole, Logan McCabe on the back end. Talk about some of the other uh, players that are really contributing to the Border Bruins this season. It's almost a question of where to start because... <laughs> Coming out of camp, we were really impressed with the roster. Then we've made a couple of changes since then. In fact, we've just had uh, a change announced this week Mm -hmm. with uh, J.P. Desabray and Alex Jesse going to Williams Lake, getting Jasper Tate, goaltender, in return. So we're really excited to see that, uh, to see Jasper back in the division. He played for Nelson a couple of seasons back. You can go down the entire roster, and, I mean, literally – Everybody on the roster has put up points, and that's not always the case, especially when you're getting you know, into your fourth line and, and your third line Ds. Right now, we're just really excited about the skill level that we've got. It's uh, an all-Neil Murdoch uh, weekend for you. You've got Castle Guard tonight, Friday night, and tomorrow you're home to Nelson. What are the keys to success for the uh, Border Bruins if uh, they're to get four points out of the weekend? maybe state the obvious the the biggest thing is do not underestimate either team i mean nelson you know in the standings right now is ahead of the border bruins and so that's obviously something to keep in mind but uh calcigar is uh is not that far behind and has had a couple of big wins so i think the most important thing is both of these are important games not to underestimate the opponents we've said for many years that in the neil murdoch division the teams are on average 
so close together mm-hmm. that it could go, you know, any game could go to either team. And that's going to be critical uh, uh, playing in Cal Cigar uh, tonight and, and hosting Nelson tomorrow. It's important points. It's divisional points. I don't know about that, though, uh, you know, Kevin. I mean, there is one point separating first and third in the Neil Murdoch. It's well, ex- exactly, exactly. And, but I mean, Cal Cigar is six points back. But, you know, they, yeah. but if you actually look at their, if you look at their schedule, They've had wins against some teams that yes. uh, that Nelson, Grand Forks, Beaver Valley have lost to. So I wouldn't uh, underestimate them either. Kevin McKinnon is the voice of the Grand Forks Border Bruins. Thank you for doing this, Kevin. Always a pleasure, Mark. This is Top Shelf, the KIJHL podcast, available on Spotify, iHeart, Apple Podcast, YouTube, and on the KIJHL.ca website. Our thanks this week to the KIJHL broadcasters, in particular, Kale Tesaro, Dave Mingo, Tom Shields, and Kevin McKinnon. KIJHL Director of Communications, Emmanuel Sequera, Coyotes Head Coach and General Manager, Ken Law, and Milwaukee Admirals Defenseman, Jake Livingstone. A big thank you to the good folks at INE Plus Nutrition. Don't forget to use the code KIJHL10 to get that discount. Finally, a stick tap to Flow Hockey, which brings our players closer to their families and friends back home. I'm Mark Berry. This is Top Shelf, the KIJHL podcast. We're back in seven days.